cooler aiming to make chief here for steam deck this is huge because this means basically that steam deck's performance could be doubled for some games fps could be doubled battery life could be extended custom fan curve would make steam deck a really quiet machine when it plays 60 fps for the most demanding titles and my today's topic is actually i want to bring this really big really huge news and i want all the english-speaking community to know about it Recently, I watched an interview with a Russian developer of 4IFIR, Chief Ear, developer, the Cooler 3D, his nickname is, and his real name is Nadir. I'll call him Cooler from now on. So if you know what Chief Ear is, feel free to skip this explanation. If you don't know, then I will leave all the links below the video uh, for your information. It's a guide translated from Russian to English. There are also a lot of videos and reviews, and you can, I guess, look for some topics on Reddit. Chief Ear is a custom software for Nintendo Switch, which lets run Switch games in 60 FPS, which unlocks graphic mods. It's a software which lets every user to unlock his Switch potential, making it basically Switch 2.0. There is no clear release date from Cooler yet. He already did some custom tweaks on his own Steam Deck, and he's sure, he's confident that for some titles it could be 2x performance increase, which unlocks 60, 60 FPS for titles, for example, like God of War, which barely runs at 40 FPS, but here it could be with better graphics on 60 FPS. It could increase the battery life. It's basically a Steam Deck 2.0, you know, getting a, an updated Steam Deck without actually paying anything, because Chief Ear will be for free, as he said, as it was for Switch. Let me just translate um, this Russian interview, one hour long interview in Russian to English, and I'll be just going from point to point. I may have skipped some point, and also I'm not a hardware guy. I don't know much about hardware, so if I'm making some manufacturing mistakes, I hope Cooler will forgive me. I hope community will forgive me. And also prior to this video, I didn't ask for Cooler permission to do this translation. And if Trendy or Cooler will not be okay with it, then maybe I'll take it down or something. But for now, I hope uh, that they will be okay with community knowing that this is happening, this might be happening in future, and therefore I'm really hyped and excited about it and I just wanted to share this news with all of you guys. So treat this as my very free interpretation of what has been said on this one hour long interview on the Trendy channel, I will leave a link below, plus I will also include a link to Cooler's GitHub, I will include links to GitHub where the Chiffier guide and Chiffier links are posted, uh, if you have Nintendo Switch and you want to unlock it and you, it's the first time you hear it, this will be the place to go to. I just want all the gamers to enjoy the gadgets which they possess as much as possible. And therefore, let me tell you what has been said during this one hour long interview. Let's go. First, Chief Ear will be for free and it is for free. Chief Ear was originally done for Nintendo Switch and right now Cooler, the developer of Chief Ear, the single developer, sole developer of Chief Ear, wants to take a break, rest a little bit, finish his personal matter of course, and after a little bit of a break, to actually start rolling out Chifir for Steam Deck. And potentially, Chifir might be released for ASUS ROG Li or maybe other PC handhelds, but he specifically said that he doesn't want to do anything with Windows as a base, because it's just a mess, apparently. If the handheld will be running Linux, he said it is a chance that he will be working on release for Chifir for other handhelds as well, Linux-based handhelds. I don't know, uh, he didn't study yet if uh, other Linux distros will be supported and whatnot, but at least he will start with Steam Deck later if he'll keep this passion. Maybe he will look into porting it to ROG LI Linux build or something, so we'll see. Time will tell. Basically, as of now, the status is that he did test some of the Chifir functionality on Steam Deck, and it works. It shows result, but it's not wrapped for a common user yet, so there is no easy quick install right now, and uh, I don't think he will release anything to the public until it's totally ready for anyone to click an icon and install Chifir completely on a Steam Deck. Cooler also said that if it would be only 20 to 30% increase, it would be not fun and it would be not enough to motivate him to do this project. But the thing is, he discovered some hardware, software, whatever optimizations, which gives Steam Deck not only 20-30% boost, but it's much more. Sometimes it's even more than 2, 2x boost. Steam Deck could be potentially, for some of the titles, twice faster as it is right now. Twice, two times. Like 200% speed instead of 100. That's just insane. Cooler also said that the hardest to run, the highest level AAA games, uh, he specifically mentioned Callisto Protocol, God of War, Dishonored 2, Days Gone. Those are the games which are harder to run at 60 FPS, and if they barely run at 40, originally aimed to be run at 30, Cooler said that it will be possible to run them in 60 FPS. Another point he mentioned is that the Steam Deck will be consuming less energy overall. So right now we can move our slider from 3 watts to 15 watts TDP, and he was saying that with his optimization on his Steam Deck, while it runs this game in 60 FPS, it doesn't make sense to push it further than 12 watt. Additionally to that, it's not only this 12 watt optimization for a CPU, GPU, as I understand it, I may be wrong, so take it with a grain of salt, but also he will be optimizing some secondary devices, such as uh, like secondary Steam Deck components, which also have its own power draw, like some system, whatever circuits, um, display under vaulting, maybe some other parts. 
which means that total energy consumption after he finishes with optimizations, optimized version will consume much less than if we set it to 12 watts right now. So TDP 12, custom fan curve, much lower power draw, much higher performance, longer battery life because it's it consumes less power, and that's what Chief here is about. And this is available to every or every other Steam Deck user, depends on the Steam Deck's hardware. So this is insane, and this is cool, and this is exactly what gets me so hyped about it. Later, Cooler went into details what exactly in hell, and once again, I'm not a hardware guy, so I'll just say my rough translation, and you take it the way you want to take it. So he's saying that mm, memory timings, uh, memory is the main bottleneck in Steam Deck. It's not even CPU or GPU, but it's exactly a memory speed. So DDR5 as a video memory, even though it's better than DDR4, DDR4, but it's still quite slow, so it's a bottleneck. And CPU and GPU can compensate for slower memory, because when the memory is too slow, CPU and GPU starts to overclock, starts to increase frequency, starts to draw much more power. But basically, the memory is slow, and even with like putting power into CPU and GPU, it doesn't change much. So memory optimization is where he's looking at the most, as I understand it. And what he says is that by tuning memory, tuning BIOS, every second Steam Deck could be could become a much better device than it is right now out of the box. Another point he mentioned is that no one really does it, or at least no one openly does it and publishes it. He specifically mentioned cryo utilities, and I'll get to it a little bit later, but yeah, as of now, his optimization, Cooler's optimization are unique, and they would provide just insane results. So once again, he's coming back and saying that if it's a AAA game, this is the type of the game which could get the most improvement out of Chiefier Steam Deck optimization. He made an example that when he was playing Red Dead Redemption 2, and then um, he had four memory channels, if I'm not mistaken, and he was turning them off, leaving only one channel, and FPS would, was dropping four times, kind of like obviously showing that the memory is a bottleneck, not GPU or CPU. And after some optimizations, as he said, he experienced 2x performance increase, which is, once again, it's just mind-blowing, right? So yeah, after these optimizations, CPU can run on full lower frequencies, and 12 watt TDP is the highest necessary TDP. It could go lower, of course, but it doesn't need to go higher, not even 15 anymore and adjusting fan curve a little bit, and it becomes a quiet, fast uh, Steam Deck with a very like long-lasting battery, a much better device than it is right now. So the secret key, kind of like the secret sauce of this optimization, is that every frequency, every step of frequency basically needs its own voltage. So while usually over over locking under volting goes, like you set the voltage for all the frequencies, he says. I'm looking for unique voltage tables, as I understand it, for each frequency. This way, uh, it becomes more efficient, and this way, the energy used uh, produce way more performance uh, per watt, basically, with this custom approach. That's how he says you can achieve 2,000 megahertz, 12 watt TDP. And as a result, once again, 30, 40 FPS only games easily could be run at 60 FPS after these adjustments. So let's get back to cryo utilities. Uh, Trendy specifically asked him about it, and uh, Cooler has replied that cryo utilities are pretty good at what they're doing, and those are basically a system level optimizations. And Cooler also said that he's going to incorporate these adjustments from cryo utilities in Chief Year software as well. Uh, he does recognize, though, that cryo utilities don't try to do low level tasks on the level of BIOS. This optimization, like take it for whatever you want, I'm not a hardware guy once again, this optimization from cryo utilities, they are not on the level of BIOS, they are still high level. And that's why there is still room to grow and room for Steam Deck to be optimized. On the other hand, Chief Year software is a software tweak. But the changes the software tweak does, they happen, they happen on a core level, on a very low level, as he said, basic initialization tables on the GPU driver level. It's even lower than the level of Proton layer. It's under OS, basically. It's lower than BIOS. So it's a really low level optimizations, which interact directly with the hardware, kind of, which allows it to be really efficient, really drastically big difference. And uh, Trendy later asked, how is it on Steam Deck in comparison with Switch? Is it easier? Is it harder? And of course, Cooler said that doing it for Steam Deck is way easier than on Switch. For end user, it might be kind of similar because it's just an installation, a click icon, choose your preset profile, whatever. But in terms of development for Steam Deck, of course, it's easier because there is no need for crazy workarounds, which he pulled off while making Chief here for Switch. So Steam Deck is open Linux platform. Just do whatever you want with it as long as you know what to do with it. Cooler also said that he would love to if Valve would actually incorporate Chiffier changes into its basic Steam Deck OS. But he said most likely Valve will not do it. Because the thing is that Steam Deck parts are being provided by, may by many different hardware suppliers. And these parts differ from each other even when they are from the same supplier. So it's kind of like a gamble every time. And what Valve prioritizes the most is stability. They want 100 Steam Decks to be 100% stable for 100% users, you know. As long as there are some users may experience some 
inconsistency with performance or something, they don't want to like play with the overclocking or play with these low hardware, low level hardware adjustments. He says it's the same as Chifir for Switch. For some people, for some Switch revisions, it works much better. For some, it still offers a basic uh, performance improvement, sometimes quite big, but it's not as big as for some of the other recent Switch, uh, Nintendo Switch uh, consoles, for example. He was making an example that for some uh, Switch revisions, uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom could run in 60 FPS, no problem, on Switch natively, with Chiffy on it. But for some st uh, Switch owners, uh, which Switch has another revision, uh, that was impossible. Running 60 FPS stable all the time was quite impossible, and that's exactly due to the hardware differences. And that's basically for each user of Chiffy to figure out how exactly they want to push how far they want to push their own Steam Decks, right? But as he said, I want Chiffier Steam Deck installation to be as easy as possible. If you want to push it to the limits, uh, you will be able to. If you will see that Steam Deck is crashing, it's not stable enough, you can always just reload it, reduce the frequency or whatever the adjustments will be, I don't know, right? Like reduce it a little bit, push it not that far, test it once again, it's stable, and then it's good for you like this. But at the same time, he did say that, yeah, out of the box, Chiffier will still offer some optimized adjustments that even if you're not a tech-savvy guy, you don't want all these experiments, you just want it to run a little bit better without caring too much about it, then there will be such setting as well. He also mentioned, Cooler also said, that complexity in Steam Deck Chiffier is not to define the maximum frequency. The problem is to find the most optimal power setting for each frequency step where it uh, behaves as stable as possible. So he knows what kind of ma maximum frequency he wants to achieve, and the biggest effort is to find this optimized power settings for each of the steps. In terms of battery saving, existing Chiffier for Switch uh, saves a lot of battery if you're using same stock performance. Or if you don't care about battery that much, uh, you can choose performance mode and your performance will boost high, like will boost a lot. Maybe you, for Steam Deck Chiffier, you will have the optimized mode where you will have a slight increase in battery life together with slight increase in performance. So it's a total win-win situation. And as long as you're able to actually like run it on your Steam Deck and find this stable optimization, that's it. You cannot go wrong about it. Uh, also, Cooler has been really transparent, really honest with his plans, that he doesn't want to promise timelines to people when the Steam Deck um, Chief here will be released, because he has his own life, he has his own job, he needs to sort out all the personal stuff which has been piling up, apparently, while he was working on Chief here for Switch. So after he takes a break, rests a little bit, he said, I might look into Steam Deck more, because I already, I'm already quite happy with the results I achieved on my own Steam Deck, and now I just need to like polish it, wrap it for all the users to be able to launch it, use it, and and another thing is that he says that Chiffier, as it is for Switch right now, it will be for free. So can you believe it? Such a huge improvement, such a huge advancement. It's a free thing which anyone can download, install, and be happy. So it's a passion project, he says. So he doesn't want any money, he doesn't want any donations, he just wants people to, to be happy, and this is the best reward for him. So what a wholesome guy. Nothing, nothing else but utmost respect to him, what can I say? A pretty interesting point uh, he was making is that Chief Ear should be jaw-dropping. If it's not jaw-dropping, it's not worth it and he wouldn't be spending his time on it. But at the same time, he didn't see anyone at all doing the same thing he's doing for Switch or Steam Deck. Trendy also asked, like, what if there is such person who's working on it, would you help him? And here, Cooler said that if there is a person doing exactly this, that means he knows what he's doing, that means he's actually expert enough to do these changes on such a low level, and that means that he doesn't even really need Cooler's help, because he already figured it out. But until then, since obviously, as of now, as we can see, no one else is really working on it, or we don't know of this, uh, Cooler is going to do it himself. And yeah, once again, Chifiri is going to be for free, he doesn't want to objectify his passion project, because it's a love letter, basically to the gaming community, I guess, and his own capabilities. So he doesn't want to squeeze money out of it. He just want, he just want to do it because it needs to be done. Like, Chifir offers a lot. It asks for nothing, really. It's for free. And that's why he says, for Nintendo Switch, Chifir was really viral. Anyone who runs it wants to share it. And if I'm not wrong, Cooler did mention that his install base he had around 3 to 4 million downloads, and he has around 500,000 of active users of Chifir. So these numbers are astonishing, you know? It's for free. So many people run it, literally millions of people run Chiffier, and they don't need to pay even, I don't know, a few cents, a dollar. Personally, I think actually that at least, at least uh, Cooler should open a Patreon page or some donation alerts and let people donate some money to him because, because I would, I would ask him, but he doesn't let me to, <laughs> he didn't reply. So yeah, guys, in comments below, if you feel that this guy deserves money, deserves community love, I think if he would see that we support him, he would be more willing even to work on it, you know? I think everyone should be re rewarded for their efforts, so yeah. He is definitely, Cooler is definitely someone who deserves this recognition. Cooler also said that Chiffier will have a few options, like an optimized, easy to install mode, you install it and forget about it. Also, there will be options to fine tune, uh, to push your Steam Deck to the maximum, if you are like a hardware, hardcore guy and you really want 
to push your Steam Deck to the limit and get maximum performance out of it. Maybe there will be some option in between as well, maybe some profiles. Um, basically, he hopes that Steam Deck's chief here will be even more comfortable to use than Switch version. And the final point, and he stressed it a few times, it's just I'm not repeating it again and again. Cooler says that, please, guys, everyone, don't hope that I will release it very soon, um, because I'm going to take my time, I'm going to release it when the time comes, and I'll work step by step. So there will be a wow effect, you will be blown away, there will be a better battery, better performance, everything will be better. It will depend, though, on your specific Steam Deck hardware. So basically, Cooler says that he'll better under-promise now than under-deliver later. And that's admirable. So yeah, guys, let me know what are your thoughts are in the comments below. Personally, me, I'm really hyped about it. I really want to express community love and community support to Cooler. I also want to make an example out of Cryobite. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember his real name, which made a Steam Deck-oriented channel, made a really great software, which benefits a little bit to a lot of Steam Deck users. And right now, he's switching to be a professional YouTuber and to make a living on his YouTube channel, actually. So I think if the guy like Cooler he doesn't need to be a, become a YouTube star, you know, but if he can open Patreon or give us his bank card and whatnot, and we can just show him our support and appreciation, and he would be able, he would be motivated even more to work on it, and he will be motivated to keep on exploring this depth of hardware, handheld, or maybe not even handheld gaming. Everyone only can win from it, so yeah, thanks a lot for your time. I really thought I should put this information out because it's in Russian, but it's not in English, so thank you guys. So thank you for listening, and see you next time. Have a good one.